first, we have been looking at this for quite some time. And what we have been weighing is this basic question of civilian harm. The challenge of cluster munitions, as you know, is that uh, even at low dud rates, there are some unexploded ordnance that is left, and that could potentially pose a risk to civilians down the road. So we did not immediately come out of the gate and provide this. But we had to balance that against the risk to civilian harm if Ukraine did not have sufficient artillery ammunition. We are reaching a point in this conflict because of the dramatically high expenditure rates of, artiller of artillery by Ukraine and by Russia where we need to build a bridge from where we are today to when we have enough monthly production of unitary rounds that unitary rounds alone will suffice to give Ukraine what it needs. So as a result, this is the moment to begin the construction of that bridge so that there isn't any period over this summer or heading into this fall when Ukraine is short on artillery and being short on artillery, it is vulnerable to Russian counterattacks that could subjugate more Ukrainian civilians. We consulted closely with allies in deciding to do this, and some allies who are not uh, signatories to the Oslo Convention uh, embraced it with open arms, said this is absolutely the right thing to do. Even allies who were signatories to the Oslo Convention, while they cannot formally support something that they've signed up to a convention against, have indicated both privately and many of them publicly over the course of today that they understand our decision and fundamentally that they recognize the difference between Russia using its cluster munitions to attack Ukraine and Ukraine using cluster munitions to defend itself, its citizens, and its sovereign territory. So we feel that this will in no way disrupt the very strong, firm unity that we have heading into the NATO summit in Vilnius next week. Ukraine has provided written assurances that it is going to use these in a very careful way that is aimed at minimizing any risk to civilians. And by the way, Ukraine, the democratically elected government of Ukraine, has every incentive to minimize risk to civilians because it's their citizens, it's Ukrainians, who they are trying to protect and defend. It doesn't make it an easy decision, and I'm not going to stand up here and say it is easy. It's a difficult decision. It's a decision we deferred. It's a decision that required a real hard look at uh, the potential harm to civilians. Mm -hmm. And when we put all of that together, uh, there was a unanimous recommendation from the national security team, and President Biden ultimately decided in consultation with allies and partners and in consultation with members of Congress to move forward on this step.